What's up guys? Today I'm here to show you a metal upgrades part kit for the Nexus Pro. But let's first get this one out of the box and show you what the Nexus Pro is. So the Nexus Pro is a pump action, mag fed, manual spring powered Nerf Bluster. Out of the box, this gets velocities around 150 feet per second and it's sold exclusively at Walmart in the USA for around $50 although local importers such as Blaster Tech here in Australia have also been importing these and you can buy from them too. Now, a very quick and easy modification you can do to these is to simply put a spacer behind the spring and that'll bump your velocities from 150 up to around an average of 180. Now, for some people that 180 might be enough, but for here where we play with about 300 feet per second, the higher we can get this, the better. There's quite a number of limiting factors to the Dart Zone Nexus Pro, as well as all of the Adventure Force and Dart Zone Pro line. However, recently, a third-party company called Worker have stepped in with a metal parts upgrade kit, which simply drops straight into the Nexus Pro and corrects all of the flaws that I have with the blaster. The Worker upgrade kit for the Nexus Pro is available from a few different sellers. The first one that I saw was AK Blaster Mods, and that's where I ordered the first one of these from. A few days later, I contacted Worker Kit themselves, and they agreed to send me a free one for review, so that's why I have two. So today I'll be installing one of these kits into a brand new blaster that belongs to a friend, and the one that Worker gave me for free, I'll be putting into the field owner here at Battle for Waterloo's Nexus Pro, which used to be mine. Now let's go over the individual parts of this drop-in kit. All of the parts of this kit, such as this barrel here, are done in aluminium, and they've been anodized to reduce the risk of corrosion. This barrel has a 13 millimeter internal diameter, which is a much better fit for darts compared to the stock barrel. Now this dart gate here positions the barrel in such a way that when you load a dart in, the dart's actually going to enter the barrel. In the Nexus Pro, it gets pushed into a bit of plastic first that comes before the barrel, and that's a massive hindrance to performance. Now also, because of inside the dart gate, the pusher is going directly into the barrel, there's a perfect air seal, which is crucial to high performance. It also comes with this piece, which simply just centers the barrel in there, which is important for accuracy. And finally, if you're not a fan of this stepped top rail, this metal one slides on and then there's a grub screw to tighten it down, which gives you a level top rail. So now let's take down the blaster and I'm gonna install everything and show you exactly how it's done. Now, the only thing you actually need to bring yourself to do this mod, aside from the blaster itself, obviously, is a Phillips head screwdriver to get all the screws open of the blaster. To install the parts of the kit itself, it does require some Allen keys, but it comes provided with those, which is pretty cool. Undo all of the screws on the orange body itself. I'm gonna start with the end cap, which is where you can change the spring out. Whoop, don't lose the screws. This table has little holes in it. All right, so now I've got this the spring out. This blaster already had a spacer in it. I'm doing Paul, the field owner's blaster first because he wants the silver color, but I'll actually leave the spacer out so we can get stock velocities with the upgrade kit. All the screws, probably do a time jump. Um, I think you also have to remove the grip. So I lied, you don't just have to remove the parts on the orange. You don't have, definitely don't have to remove the foregrip though. I remember that. So there's the grip off. And oh yeah, there is a screw under here as well. Now we have all of the screws done. So now, oh there's, yep, there's some uh, clips on the top of the uh, buffer tube there, there's two clips. So something to pry that with. Come on, you prick of a thing. Oh, we got it. And a couple of screws shot out. Now, this is my old Nexus Pro that I previously modified myself before selling it to Paul. But the kit that we installed today should perform better than my modification did. So the first thing I'm gonna do is remove the dart gate, which is just this screw here. Yeah. 
huh, that epoxy didn't hold up over time. So now the dart gate can come out. We're going to be replacing that with a metal one. And this entire thing here, I believe, where's their pusher? Oh no, we keep this plastic extension piece here. This piece allows you to also fire full length darts. Not sure why you ever would though, they're not as accurate as half length darts. But we do need to keep this piece for it to work. And now there's a little pin in there that we need to push out. If you have a hammer, it would make this a lot easier. But you need to put something thin like that onto the pin and then tap it out. On my second time of doing this, because we're replacing the plastic bolt anyway with the metal one, I decided to break the bolt in half. And because the part on the pin that grips is in the very center inside the bolt, it made it a lot easier to remove. Okay, so I've probably just jump cut getting this pin out because it's taken me a few minutes to get it that far. But without a hammer, I just got this narrow screwdriver bit and was bashing down on it. And now it's sticking out enough that I should be able to just grab some pliers and pull it the rest of the way out. There we go. Okay, so we grab the metal bolt, shove that in there. I've actually got a replacement pin. I guess that's in case you stuff up the original pin trying to get it out. But just push it in, uh, put it down on the table and push it the rest of the way in. There we go. The new pin is in and the new bolt is attached. Now I tell a lie, you don't just need a screwdriver. Probably recommended to also have some lubricant. Usually Worker includes that in their kits, but not with this one by the looks. So I'm just gonna use some Inox MX6 lubricant. Gonna take a small bit of that, put it on the two O-rings at the back of the pusher. And a tiny bit on the front of the bolt itself. Put some new lube on the telescoping full length dart piece. And now we just push the new bolt difficultly. It doesn't really want to go in. Whoop, there we go. It's in. It didn't want to go in, but it did eventually. So what you're actually meant to do is unthread the bolt into the two halves and then feed the back of the bolt through from the rear and then simply screw it back together again. So now I just set this assembly aside and we'll have a look at the barrel now. So to install the barrel, there are two Allen key screws which, which fasten down on it. Out of the box, I couldn't push the barrel all the way in until I loosened them a bit. So now it's in all the way, grab our Allen key and tighten this up. Okay, that's good enough I reckon. First I reckon you want to put the bolt back in. And now I'm just threading the barrel through past the bolt. And there's a screw post there which that first hole goes through. And the second one, one of the screws you removed goes into that one. Pop that back in there. Now to center the barrel, you're gonna to wanna to thread this on and have it sit in the groove there. This part here, this bit of faux barrel is in case you wanna add a faux suppressor. Worker sells a couple that fits straight onto that orange bit of barrel there. So now with the shotgun grip all the way forwards, it should seal into there. So now we just wanna put the shell back together. Just doing everything in reverse. Those tabs on the buffer tube lock in, and then you just pop all of the screws back in. Okay, so I've got most of the blaster back together now. The only thing left to do with this kit is to put this metal top rail on. And that's completely optional if you prefer it with the stepped top rail. More than welcome to leave it like that. But it just pushes on 
and then you take the small Allen key and you tighten this grub screw to keep it in place. Okay, so now all I've got left to do is crony the blaster. First up, I'll test the stock spring with this upgrade kit. It's got a perfect air seal now and a slightly longer barrel and the dart gets loaded directly into the barrel rather than into a bit of plastic first and steps down to the barrel. After testing just the stock spring, I'll throw in this spacer, which was getting 180 feet per second with the stock internals and see what it's getting now. I'll see you over at the crony. All right, I've got 10 Adventure Force Pro Darts. Let's see how hard this shoots. One twenty four, one fifty one, one fifty, one fifty six, one fifty eight, one fifty seven, one twenty two, one fifty two. 144, 117, and there you have it. We had a bit of variation with the lower shot being that 117. Uh, so perhaps this is designed, this barrel's too long for the stock spring. So now I'll shove in that spacer and see what we get. All right, so now I've got the spacer installed. And yeah, that's a bit of a heavier prime. Another 10 Adventure Force Pro Darts. One ninety seven, one seventy five, one eighty six, one ninety, one ninety five, one ninety nine. 197, 200, 195, 199, and that's it. We're empty. Overall, I'd have to say, Worker have done a really good job with this kit. A high of 200 feet per second is about what I was getting out of mine after spending a few hours modifying it. If you're brand new to the hobby of shooting foam darts, being able to buy this blaster for 50 USD, plus getting this drop-in kit for 46 USD, for just under 100 USD, you have a competitive blaster that shoots 200 feet per second, and it's gonna be insanely competitive on the field. This drop-in kit, while it doesn't exceed 200 FPS like I was expecting it to, it does match the hours of modifications that I did myself to this blaster before the drop-in kit came out. I'd have to say if you have a Nexus Pro now and you don't feel like modifying it yourself, this kit is a valid option and I definitely recommend getting it. That's all for this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed the sound quality of having this lav mic now. We've just passed 10,000 subscribers and I'd like to keep seeing that go higher, so make sure you're subscribed. Also comment down below with any questions and I'll make sure to answer them. That's it for this one and I'll see you next time.